Hello guys, uh, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you. Ever since it was announced uh, that the Philippines is opening back up, I've been bombarded with emails and messages and phone calls from my subscribers asking me about uh, different questions about coming here, what to expect, what to bring, what to do. And uh, today what I'm going to do is uh, give you some tips and some advice, some things that I've learned, not from myself so much, but from other guys who've been here and have gone through it. Some of them made mistakes, some of them didn't. And I want to make sure that if you come here, the things work out as well for you as they did for me. As you know, I came here three years ago and I was in pretty dire straits when I left America. And in the sense, in the past three years, my life has turned around a thousand percent. I live in a beautiful home here out right on the beach. I have a beautiful wife, I'm happily married, I've got lots of friends, I've sorted out my financial problems. And things are going great, and it's all because of the Philippines. And I want to make sure that that's the way it works out for you too. If you decide to come here for whatever reason, like some of you are, are set anyway financially, you don't have any problems in America, wherever you're coming from, and you're just coming here to retire and have a, have a good life. I want to make sure it works out for you. But there's other of you that have contacted me and they were in similar situations or they are in similar situations that I was. And they're hoping that when they come to the Philippines, their lives turn around like mine did. So um, this is for everybody. And there's real no order to these uh, little bits of advice that I've got for you. I've kind of things I've collected and written down. So let's start off with the first thing. Before you come here, if you have the money, you know, I, when I came here, I didn't, but if you're in a financial situation where you can pay off your debts, do that before you get here. Pay off your credit cards, come here with as little debt as possible, with as little um, responsibility financially back in your home country. It just makes things easier. If you've got to sit down and pay bills every month uh, from, you know, back in America, back in Australia, or Europe, wherever you're from, it just kind of complicates things. It's also really handy to have your credit cards paid off in case of an emergency, like let's say you have to go to the hospital, you have to uh, book a flight home, um, you have to do whatever, you know, you've got that credit card there with all that um, credit on there that you can use rather than being in debt like I was. So that's a good thing to do. So pay off your credit cards if you can. Also, this is really important. Go to the doctor. Before you come here, go to your doctor and don't just get a basic checkup. Get everything done, everything. I mean. If your insurance will cover it, you know, get an EKG, get blood work done, get all of that stuff, get your prostate checked, get everything done so you know when you get on that plane to come to the Philippines, you're in good health and you don't have anything to worry about. Um, the exception to that would be dental work. If you're in need of dental work, um, find out what you, go to your dentist, find out what it is you need to have done, but then have it done here. There are loads and loads of excellent dentists here and it's at a fraction of the cost that you pay uh, back in America especially. Like, I obviously don't know what it's, the costs are in Australia or Germany or other places, but here in the Philippines, for example, um, I had a friend of mine that broke a tooth and he had to get a root canal and a crown put on. Back in America where he was from, it would have cost him about $2,000. Here in the Philippines, it cost him less than 200 So that's a good thing. You can come here and get your dental work done, which also I highly recommend because uh, they found out that if you let your teeth go, you know it can affect your heart, affect your health and everything else. So um, if you've got the money, come here and, and get it done when you get here. Um, <clears throat> many things in the Philippines are less expensive. <clears throat> Rent, for example. Um, you know, I live in a beautiful three bedroom furnished uh, apartment with uh, three different internets to use, um, right on the beach, all gated. Um, private, you know, just me and, and Jen living here uh, along with the owner and uh, it's just fantastic. I pay $600 a month for this place. If I found anything comparable to this apartment in America on the beach, doesn't matter if it's in California, Florida, South Carolina, Texas, wherever, um, I'd be paying thousands and thousands of dollars for something like this. And so that's a good thing. Rent here is where you're going to save the most money, I think, of all the, all the monthly expenses that a person has. Rent is probably your biggest savings, and that's a great thing. Um, so, but one thing that isn't cheap here is medication. Um, as I mentioned in other videos, I had uh, quadruple bypass surgery 
about 10 years before I came here. And uh, I'm on medication. I'm on lisinopril and also um, a statin. Well, my lisinopril, before I left, I went to Walmart and I filled a three month supply. My doctor gave me a prescription and it was $12 um, for three months. Here, uh, last week, I went and filled it. I got, you know, one month supply and it was almost $40. So prescriptions here can be a lot more. So my advice to you is bring as many as you can with you before you come here. Um, you don't need a prescription to actually get a lot of uh, the medications from the pharmacies here. You can go in and tell them what you want and you can get it for them. The exception of that would be any kind of opioids, sleeping pills, anything like that. But usually antibiotics, um, blood pressure medication, things like that, you can get it, get it without a prescription, which makes things easier. You don't have to go see a doctor to get a prescription. So that's, that's a good thing. What I did is I went to my doctor and told him I was going to the Philippines. He just gave me two prescriptions for the same medication, both for uh, 90 days. And so I just filled both of them. So I came here with six months supply, which, which, saved, which uh, helped me out. Because also, sometimes you go to the pharmacy and they'll be out of stock. They won't have your prescription. Lisinopril is a very common blood pressure medicine, but I've been to like three pharmacies in a row and they're out of stock. So that's why it's good to bring it with you and start shopping around for refills uh, long before you run out. Um, let's see what else. If you have uh, good, affordable, or free insurance in your home country, now like say you're from Canada, Germany, you've got insurance, I'm not sure if you still pay something per month, I'm not sure how it works there, but in America, like for example, I've got Medicare. Uh, don't drop your Medicare, keep it, because you never know. If something serious happens, say you come down with cancer, or heart disease, or whatever, uh, you're probably your best bet is to go back to your home country and be treated there, and then come back here when you're better. But uh, hang on to it, because you might need it. Um, do not buy or build a house here. A lot of you guys come over here hoping to find the love of your life. Um, and a lot of guys have, have found that and it's worked out great for them. But you'll find a lot of the women when you meet them, one of the first things they'll bring up is they want to buy or build a house. It's like every Filipino's dream to buy or build a house. Do not do that. Don't do it. Um, one of the reasons is here in the Philippines, if you buy property, you don't own it hundred percent. A Filipino has to own 60% and you would own 40. And so you buy a house, she's going to have control over it. If things don't work out, you're not even going to get your 40%. I know so many guys where they came here, married a girl, got involved with a girl, bought a house, built a house, whatever, spent all their life savings on this house and the relationship didn't work out and they lost everything. They never got a dime back. She's still in the house. They lost everything. And so don't do that. Um, rent, it's just so much better to rent. It's so much easier. Like here, I love where I'm at right now, but the only reason I'm here is I was renting month to month in my previous apartment. And I happened to stumble across this place and I immediately said, yeah, I'll take it because it's such a great deal. And things like this are very hard to find. But if I had owned a house or I had a year contract on my apartment, I couldn't have taken this place. I would have missed out. So it gives you flexibility. And you also never know, like you might have to go back to your home country for whatever reason, for health business, health reasons, business reasons, whatever. And you don't want to be stuck with a piece of property that you can't sell. And so better off to, you know, just leave your money, whatever investments or where you've got it. And don't buy a house here. Um, I just don't recommend it. Now, there is talk of in the government here in the Philippines of changing the law where foreigners can own property 100 percent. If that changes, and you know you're never going to leave the Philippines, maybe you want to reconsider. The other thing is like, if you're married to a girl, you know, I'm happily married, I still wouldn't buy a house. I've told you in that before we, we just started dating. But if you're in a relationship and say, you know, you're married, you're happily married, maybe you've even got children together and you know that, you know, you're staying in the Philippines, you're not going anywhere. Maybe then that's an exception. Go ahead, build a house if you want to do that. Just keep in mind that, you know, if something should ever happen, you're not getting any money out of that house. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing is businesses. Um, a lot of guys come over here and they're not, they don't have a pension or they don't have social security. And so they have to find a way to make money. They got to come over here with a lump sum of cash and that's going to last them for a couple of years maybe. And then they got to find a way to make a living. It seems like the most common thing they do is one of two things, bars or restaurants. Bars or restaurants, they always open a bar or a restaurant. 
And it's the same thing with the house. You own 40%, your partner who's a Filipino has to own 60%. So you gotta find somebody you trust to be your partner. And then if things don't work out, um, guess what? They got control of the business. So, you know, don't go into business here. Um, there's so many ways now to make money online, but open a bar or restaurant, I've seen so many of them fail here. I know so many guys that have lost millions of pesos because they opened a bar or restaurant. Plus, you know, you're coming here hopefully to retire, even if you know, you're younger, say you're in your 40s or 50s. Um, do you really want to spend, you know, 12 hours a day in some little bar or restaurant, you know, for the rest of your life, you know, eking out a living? You're better off to find a way to go online and make money, but I just don't recommend uh, going to business here at all. Um, there's so many things you can do online. Like for me, you know, I, I tutor English online. I've got my YouTube channel. I know guys that do web design. Um, they do a marketing, all kinds of different things online. There's just, you know, you can Google it. You can go on YouTube and find, you know, thousands of opportunities to make a decent little living, like say 200 to $500 a week in your spare time online, like do that. And then you got the flexibility if, even if you decide to go back to your home country, you can keep that little business online. Like I can go to Thailand, I can go to America, I can go anywhere and continue doing what I'm doing now without changing anything. And that's, again, it gives you that flexibility. Uh, but tying yourself down, taking your life savings and putting it into a business here, I just, I just think it's very, very risky right now. So I do just wouldn't do that. The other thing for those of you guys that are coming out here, getting in a relationship, maybe you met somebody on a vacation, you're here before, maybe you're, you're seeing somebody online, whatever it is, and you're coming here hoping to have a relationship, maybe you get married, and one thing you're gonna have to realize is with Filipinas, it's part of their society, but I haven't met a girl yet that say under 40 that doesn't wanna have children. They all wanna have children, it's a big thing for them. So. If you're older like me and you don't want to have children and you know that um, you're too old for it anyways, um, make it very clear to her that you know, you're not going to have children because I see guys that come here, you know, I've got a, you know, a neighbor who's gotten two girls pregnant, you know, two children and huge responsibility. If you're not paying for that child support, they can take you to court here, they can hold your passport, all kinds of things can happen. And it's just not fair to the child. It's not fair to uh, the mother. And unless you really, really think about it, have a long talk with your partner, you know, having a child, you know, later on in life, is not necessarily a good thing. You have to think about the child. You have to think about if you're going to be able to support that child, you know, because you're going to be gone before they're adults. That's the way it's going to happen. I do have one friend of mine. He's uh, in his 70s. He's married to a Filipina. She wanted a child, and so they had a baby together when he was like 68, 69. Now he's in his mid-70s, and that child's the light of his life. He is so happy. The child, he's got it set up so that her schooling is paid for all the way through university. He's got a pension that will go to his wife when he passes away. And so no matter what happens, they're set, and he's very close to this child. His wife actually has a job, and so she goes to work every day, and he stays home with this little girl, and he's just so happy. And so it does work both ways, but you know, it's a big decision. When you're younger, um, you don't think about these things and you're, uh, you're talking to your wife or your girlfriend and she wants to have a baby. All she's thinking about a baby, she's not thinking about having a teenager. You know, she's not thinking about having a 12 year old. Um, so you have to, you know, really think about it, you know, and look at the pros and cons and most importantly, make sure you can financially support that child. That's the biggest thing. Um, and if you can't do that, you have no business having a child, so get a vasectomy, practice safe sex, whatever, but don't go bringing a child into this world that you can't afford, because I see it all the time here, not just with foreigners and Filipinas, but with Filipinos, you know, couples, where they're both, you know, girls get pregnant here all the time. And uh, it's a big problem with single women who, they get pregnant and the guy just takes off and they're left there by themselves to uh, deal with it. It's pretty difficult in a poor country like this, so think about that. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, going back into business, um, you'll have guys you'll meet, like when you first get here, um, you want to make friends. Like for me, I didn't know a single person when I got to the Philippines. And so what happens is you tend to make friends with people that you wouldn't normally hang around. Like for example, at uh, my first place I lived, there was like a little cabana 
and in the morning some of the guys would go out there and have their coffee. And so I wanted to make friends, so I'd get my coffee, go out there and sit down with them. And I'd say 90% of these guys, if I had a choice, they're not people I would hang out with. They had different political views than me. They were radical in one way or another. Um, some of them were a bit vulgar in the things that they liked to talk about. And they weren't guys I'd normally hang out with. Um, and so be careful when you make friends here. One thing about the Philippines, it's very, very easy for expats, guys like you and me, to make friends here. Very easy, because we stand out like a sore thumb. Um, you walking around at the mall or something, guys will just say hello to you because you're, they haven't seen your face before and they know you're a foreigner and you make a new friend. But be very careful because I've had guys come up to me wanting me to go into business with them. One of my neighbors in my first apartment complex, a guy named Mel, um, he was a friendly enough guy, former Navy guy. Everybody kind of liked him. Not somebody, again, I would normally hang around with. But um, I'd known him for almost a year and one day he said, hey, Mark Miller, I want to show you something. So I go to his apartment, and he's got this business proposal, and it's for um, medical tourism, getting guys to come to the Philippines for medical treatment. And he says he's got funding, and he's got an office, and got all these things set up. And he's talked um, one guy into giving him a free car to drive, um, who's one of his partners. And this guy's apparently put up some money, and he wanted me to get involved in it. And the first thing I started thinking about is like, you know, okay, the Philippines, good for dental work. Not so great for, you know, coming here to have like a hip replacement or something. You're better off to go to, go to Thailand or Vietnam for that. And anyway, I didn't have the money anyway, so it was a, it was a mute point. But, so I didn't get involved in it. Well, it turns out, several months later, this guy owed everybody in the apartment complex money. He, owed, he had a, a maid that he had working for him, like an aide taking care of him. He owed her money, and he split like in the dead of night, owing all these people money. There was no business. The guy that had the car didn't get his money back. And so be very careful about with the expats trying to get you to get involved in any kind of business. And, and something else is like, a lot of guys come here and they're, they're pretty well set. I met guys here that are millionaires. Um, if you've got money, if you're successful, you've got money in the bank, got investments, whatever, you know, you're meeting new people. Some guys have a tendency to brag. They want to like impress these people and let them think that they're worthy of being their friends or whatever, get their respect, you know, whatever, whatever reason people do this. But don't brag about how much money you've got. Don't sit there and say, well, you know, I've got a million dollars in a bank and I brought a hundred grand with me and da, 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 da. Don't do that. I see guys do it all the time. And maybe the person you're telling this to, um, they're not going to do anything to me. Maybe they'll be your friend. Maybe, you know, it won't go any further than them. But people talk here. And so it gets out, hey, you know, so-and-so, He's got millions of dollars. He keeps a hundred grand in his apartment. You know, this is a poor country. This is a very poor country. When someone sees that, you know, you've got a hundred grand sitting around, you got money in your apartment or whatever, you're just setting yourself up for robbery, kidnapping, whatever, being scammed by a girl, being scammed by other expats. You just keep it to yourself. Don't let, don't discuss your, your finances with anybody unless you really, really know them. And it's a trusted, trusted friend. Like I've got maybe two friends that I know that I've known for like over two years that I would trust discussing finances with. And again, I don't have any money to steal, so I'm kind of safe. But uh, just be very careful about talking about that and getting involved with it. Going back to relationships, um, one thing some guys do here with their girlfriends is they give them an allowance. You know, so much money per month, usually not much, like three, 4,000 pesos, whatever. But if you're dating a girl, you're just having coffee with her, getting to know her, and all of a sudden she wants to discuss her allowance before you've even had a, you know, a serious date or you're seriously involved with her, I'd stay away from somebody like that because she's just after money. Um, I never had that with Jen. I never had her ask me for money ever, you know, even now that we're married, you know. You know, I make sure she has money if she needs it, but I never, we never talked about an allowance or anything like that. Um, and so I'd look out for that. And also, I don't like the whole sound of it because it almost looks like you're paying somebody to be your girlfriend. You're paying her to be your girlfriend. Like, I'll give you 3,000 pesos a month and you'll be my girlfriend or live, move in with me. Uh, so I just think that's wrong and I think it's a big red flag. Now, the exception to that would be, say you meet a girl and she's working at the mall or something or she has a job and then you want her to, and here with jobs, like these girls work you know, six days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. So if 
you want her to quit her job so she can hang out with you and tour around the Philippines with you, then she's lost her income. And so you should compensate her for that. You should be giving her at least what she was earning with her job and covering her expenses. That's only fair. So that's the exception to that. The other red flag, and I've seen a lot of guys um, get into trouble with this, is they meet a girl, they fall in love with her, and then she says, well, you know, you know, my family, you know, I want to be able to take care of my family, and they want you to pay so much money per month to their family, like give them a salary per month, like two, three, four, five hundred dollars a month forever. And then on top of that, when, you know, the, motor, the motorbike breaks down, somebody has to go to the doctor, whatever goes wrong, they turn to you, like you're, you become an ATM, a walking ATM for the family. Stay away from that. I mean, you think about it in America, if you marry somebody, you're not supporting your wife's family. It doesn't even come up, even if they're wealthy or you're wealthy and they're not or whatever, it doesn't come up. So um, that's a red flag. Stay away from that. Um, you can do it on a case by case basis. You know, I've helped Jen's family out for various things with their house and broken motorcycles and things. But um, to agree to pay X amount of dollars per month especially when you're just dating somebody and they're asking you to do that. It's a red flag, stay away from that. And it's another way guys get into trouble. And when they have, you know, some of these girls going back to the houses, I know guys that have built a house for a girl who they met online. They haven't even met her in person. They spent her money, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, and she's built a house. This is a true story. This happened just a couple weeks ago. A guy had built, 40, 50, 000, or built a house for this girl we met online spent like forty, fifty thousand dollars on it. And then when he came to visit her, to move in with her, she was with this other guy. She had a Filipino boyfriend living there the whole time and said, sorry, get away from me, and had him thrown, her, thrown off the, the property. And so he lost everything. So, I mean, be real careful with that kind of stuff. Let's see. Um, and then, you know, do a, set up a budget. Um, if you're coming here on, on say, Social Security, like I was, um, you know how much money you're going to get every month. You know exactly how much you've got. So factor that into, you know, what your expenses are going to be here. And also always factor in unexpected expenses. Um, I've never, ever um, had a month go by where something doesn't happen and, you know, an unexpected expense, like my motorcycle breaks down, you have to go to the doctor you know, whatever, something comes up unexpected. So factor that in. And once you set a budget, keep to it. Even if all of a sudden you get an increase in the amount of money you've got coming in or you get a windfall from property being sold or inheritance, whatever, you know, try and stay to your budget. And you know, it just alleviates all the stress. And, you know, that's a good thing to do. And especially if you're, if you're involved in a relationship, you know, teach your wife or girlfriend about a budget too and stick to it. The other way I see guys totally ruining their lives out here and everything just goes you know terrible for them is with driving you have a motorcycle wreck car wreck out here you're not insured you don't have a driver's license they can take you for a lot of money um, if you're going to drive here most people will be riding a motorcycle if you haven't ridden a motorcycle since you were a teenager you better practice or get some lessons or something because Driving here is not like driving in America or Europe. I mean, people don't follow the rules here. There's no stoplights, stop lines, or um, stop signs at the intersections. They're usually just wide open. People fly through. Um, people will turn right from the left lane. They'll pass you on both sides. They'll pass on the shoulder. Um, trucks coming from the opposite direction will overtake and come right into your lane and force you off the road. Um, so it's really hazardous driving here. So you really have to pay attention and I know so many guys that have had accidents. I'd say probably 90% of the men I know that are here and have been here for say two years have had at least one uh, motorbike accident, at least one. So be careful. Now, quick story. Um, I knew a neighbor of mine had a motorcycle, paid for, spent like four grand on it, I guess. Um, didn't have a Filipino driver's license. The bike wasn't registered properly. And he's out driving one night, had a couple of drinks, wasn't drunk though, was out, you know, with even one or two drinks impairs you, you know, on a motorcycle to some degree. And uh, he's driving at night, and there's a guy on a tricycle pedal bike. It's like a picture a bicycle with a little sidecar on it or a little carriage thing to carry things welded to the side of it. 
you know, no lights or anything. He's out on this guy's on the main road, and this guy comes along, that my neighbor, doing like 35, 40 miles an hour, doesn't see him, crashes right into him. Breaks his leg, busts his ribs, breaks his shoulder. Um, the guy on the, on the bike wasn't really hurt, but was, he was banged up a little bit. So they take him to the hospital, gets to the hospital. They wanted 80,000 pesos up front before they would even look at him. He, so he's laying there on a gurney, in pain, in agony, didn't have any money on him. And so he had to start calling up his friends and his friends, you know, put together enough money. Actually, I was the, car the courier and they gave me the 80,000 pesos. I take it down to the hospital and give it to him. Here in the Philippines, by the way, they won't treat you unless you've got insurance or you've got cash on you. You have to be able to pay in advance. Um, and so to make a long story short, he was like hundreds of thousands of pesos in debt uh, when he got out of the hospital. And he had lost his apartment, lost the motorbike, and now he's living in some little knee pad someplace because he's totally ruined. Um, so motorbikes and car accidents here can really uh, cause you to go broke in the Philippines. And so you have to be very careful and really think about it if you even want to drive here. Um, some cities, like say you're in Manila, Cebu, you can get around public transportation, no problem. You don't even need a bike or a car. Uh, here where I live, you know, in Bacong, uh, Negros Oriental, uh, Dumaguete, Valencia, those areas, you're going to need transportation because there's tricycles here that are very slow and, you know, it's not an easy way to get around, especially for a big guy like me, I barely fit in them. And so you're going to want a car or a motorcycle. So, you know, just be cautious, you know, and make sure, you know, register the bike. When you register your bike here, by the way, they automatically give you insurance. It's automatically added on there. So you have your insurance. Get a driver's license or make sure you've got an international driver's license. And that way, if something does happen, you're covered. But you, and also make sure you've got money in the bank or a credit card in case you have to go to the hospital. Because I didn't, went, saw a guy the other day that owns a nice little restaurant here. And he's all banged up, wearing a sling and stuff. And dog ran out in front of him, wrecked his motorbike, was in the hospital. I mean, it happens all the time here, all the time. I've had, since I've been here, I think I've had three or four wrecks. Fortunately, they're all minor, you know, the scrapes, you know, you know, scraped knee, scraped ankle, whatever, but nothing serious, but it could have been serious. And I've had many, many close calls where literally we could have got killed. Like a pickup truck coming down the hill real fast in the blind corner, misses me by inches. Another one from behind slammed on his brakes, you know, didn't see us, almost hit us. I mean, it's, it's dangerous driving here. So that's one thing to be very cautious of when you first get here especially if you haven't ridden a motorbike a long time. Don't go buy yourself a motorcycle if you haven't ridden one since you were a teenager. Get a scooter, they're much easier to control. You know, your average speed is gonna be like 25 to 35 miles an hour. So, you know, if you're wearing a helmet and you're being aware of everything, you'll be okay, but just be careful with that. That's one thing that can really, you know, destroy your whole uh, experience of being here. But basically, you know, that's, that's my, uh, my little precautions and stuff. I want you guys to, to come here. I mean, I know I did a video not long ago about leaving the Philippines, but it wasn't because there's anything wrong with the Philippines. It was because I'd been here for three years. We'd had the typhoon and um, the power had been out for 10 days, no internet. And I was just bored. I was bored before the typhoon ever happened. And so I was thinking about going someplace else. Um, and still, I would like to be able to travel. My wife has never been anywhere. I'd like to take her to see some other countries, but um, I've been around the world. I've been to over a hundred countries, guys, and I can tell you the Philippines is one of the best places I've ever been. It's safe here. The people are friendly. The weather's beautiful. Um, you got magnificent, you know, waterfalls and beaches and mountains and all kinds of things to do. But, it, you know, it's, it's a developing country. You're not going to find the same infrastructure that you have in America. You're not going to be able to go to the mall and find everything you want, you know, that you can in other countries. So. You know, there's, there's disadvantages, but if you sit down and really weigh the pros and cons of living here, for me, the pros way outweigh the cons. They really do. So that's all I really got to say, guys. Thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I read all your comments. Um, I really do, and I appreciate those. And uh, hope to see you here someday. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Bye.